anyway, good morning. Happy Friday. We're live. It's December 13th, 2019. Everybody give a nice, loud, powerful yawn for the crowd. <laughs> Happy Friday the 13th. It is Friday the 13th, isn't it? Oh. Okay, we better <laughs> stop the webcast right now. Done. See you. See you next week. All right, Linda's joining us live from the Facebook crowd. Kelly's with us. Kelly says, I see you. I see you too, Kelly. Actually, I don't see you. That would be creepy. Um, Always watching. That's right. <laughs> Big Brother Seth. Big Brother Seth. So I was actually uh, pleasantly surprised to see how uh, a number of people had said that I had turned them on to Dynalist and they really liked it. And some even said they're actually using it with clients. Jennifer turned on her camera. Woohoo! Um, yeah, I have to unmute. <laughs> <That's> good. Hi. <laughs> good morning. How's the good weather morning. in Mexico? Very sunny and warm. It looks it's like, like it's sunny. Weather. Yeah. It's, yeah. Actually, we do have sunny weather. Lately, it's been overcast, but today the sun has come out. Apparently, today is tomorrow. Right, get it? The sun will come you. out tomorrow. Never mind. Yeah, Greg, see, good. Greg's on the same wavelength. I'm too good. tired now for that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so it was nice to see that a lot of people actually have really kind of taken, have, 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 have drunk the Dynalist Kool-Aid, right? Dyna-Aid. Um, I really love this product. And I've been, I, I, at first it was like one of these things where I was like, it's cool, but it doesn't solve a problem I don't already have solved. So I'm not, I, you know, I couldn't, and then I just sort of started forcing myself to use it and play with it, even if I didn't think I needed it, because I just kind of just, there was something about it, you know, you know, when you just know, like when you fall in love and you just know this is the one, right? Where you taste chocolate for the first time. Anyway, <laughs> this is where I'm at this morning. So anyway, I want to walk through. A bunch of Dynalist stuff today. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, or for those of you who are but haven't quite had a look at every little nook and cranny under the hood of what this thing can do, right? So we're going to go through a few different things here. Um, of course, I will share my screen. Greg will remind me to do so, as he often does. There we go. We got things set up right. I have to go answer the door. I'll be right back. All right, go answer the door. We'll wait. I hope it's something good, like a new Christmas package or something. All right, getting there. So and where this sort of came up, or I should say came back for me recently, was you know in our 97 and Up group, one of our members had kind of said to me that, you know, the thing that we've heard before, the thing that I put into the title of this week's episode – which is, you know, I've got all these apps. I'm overwhelmed. There's so many apps. And is, isn't there just like one app I can use? And I, I, I had to think about it. Like, is there, like for somebody like that who's really struggling and just trying to figure out where to start, is there one app I could recommend that would be like the app that like if you're overwhelmed and confused and you have no idea what app to use or where to start or what you need or what you don't need, you know, is there one app I could point to and say, you know, this is the app you should use you know, at least to start with, and that you might even find you'll stay with it uh, long term. And I, you know, Dynalist is actually what I came up with for that. So I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you, first of all, you know, just kind of right off the top, main reasons why it's ridiculously easy to use, right? Um, I'm going to show you some of the stuff that's under the hood with Dynalist today, but just know right off the top, it's very, very easy to use. Anyone can figure out how to use it, even if you're not a nerd like me, right? Um, so that's one of the main reasons. I That was one of the top criteria for solving this particular problem that I was essentially being asked to solve for somebody was it's, you know, it needs to be an app that's really easy to use. Because when, when I'm in overwhelm mode, I'm not really in the mode to be able to learn anything too complicated, right? I'm overwhelmed. I've got basically mental blockers on because I'm trying to diffuse that feeling of overwhelm. So I need something that's very simple. I need something that will easily enable me to purge what's going on in here and get it down on paper, so to speak, you know, digitally, right? Tiffany looked shocked. Like, paper? No, no paper. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> but but the, you, you get the idea. It's just to get whatever's going on here out of here and onto something that I can look at right? As soon as I start doing that, 
I start feeling better immediately. I start feeling, you know, I, I start feeling the, the stress diffusing because I'm finally getting it out in a way that I can actually look at it, organize it, prioritize it. Right. And not long ago, I did a video where I talked about Dynalist on firm of the future dot com that addressed that very specific part of things is, you know, like when you're overwhelmed and you're not really sure kind of where to go or where to start, then just pull out Dynalist and start just making bullet points of whatever is in your head. Don't worry about if it's organized or not, because that's the beauty of Dynalist is it's easy to go back afterwards and organize the thoughts that you've just put down. Right. So that, that's that was the second sort of criteria for Dynalist, easy to use was the first one. The second criteria was easy to reorganize stuff once it's there, right? A lot of project management apps, it's not as easy to reorganize. I have to create a project and a task and a list and this, and there's a lot of different sort of layers to it. Um, and then it's, you know, not that it's really difficult to move things around, but it's a learning curve. I have to learn how to use the tool. Here, it's so easy. It's just click and drag and I can move something around, you know, as, as, about as quickly as I can think about it. So that was another criteria for this, for why I felt that Dynalist was the tool to solve this problem of, I'm overwhelmed, there's all these apps, I can't deal with it, I just need one app that I can use at least to get started to start figuring out how to organize my world, right? So um, let's dig into this, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, let me just make sure I've got my uh, screens organized here so I can monitor Greg, you're on a uh, detail for uh, letting me know if there's questions. Larry says diabetic chocolate. That's funny. My first time tasting chocolate, I wasn't diabetic, Larry. That came later. All right. All right. Somebody say something. It's too quiet. I feel like my headset's not working. Something. All right. Thank you. It's Christmas time. Christmas mode, right? I can't figure out how to get my camera off of widescreen so that I'm not so small and look like this. Yeah, same. It ha well, it happened last night because before it used to just show me from here up and not so much in my office. Okay. And when I click on the button to turn, um, put it back to original ratio, it does not do that. Oh, all right. So I'm having Zoom that problems. Fixed. Or is it one of those Zoom things that everybody else is having trouble with? I don't know. No, it's probably a camera thing, right? Or maybe you could not, not the product Zoom, but just zoom in on your camera like I can with mine. I can zoom in and get real close if I want to. See that? Scary. Oh, yeah. I have no idea how to use most of the technology I have. Perfect. That's the way to go. See, I have a little remote control for my webcam. Remember oh, on one I... of these Zooms when I had John Ferrara on here last time, I actually pretty much sold this camera to a lot of people. John and I think it was Brad Salamanis both went right away and bought this same camera that I'm using. It's a pretty fancy Logitech uh, webcam. So anyway, let's talk about Dynalist. Dynalist. So, so you're seeing my screen. And you, you're starting to see the lay of the land here. On the left-hand side, I've got, you know, there's folders. And then in each folder, you can create different documents to kind of organize stuff, right? And there's, you know, think, if you think about it, as, as with many apps, there's a number of ways to approach things. You can have it organized like this, or you can have like a one document for everything kind of approach to it. Um, because as you're going to see in a few minutes, one of the beauties of this is as I start to create things, like let's say I'm stressed out and overwhelmed, I'll create the quick list, right? And then if I want to get focused on the quick list, I could, I could simply, you know, hit enter and tab and that's how you quickly indent. And I can start thinking, okay, got to do this and that, right? And you can quickly start purging your thoughts. Um, that other thing I just remembered, right? But if I want to focus just on working on this click list, I can click on the bullet point. And boom. And I can go in as deep as I want to, as many levels as I need to. So I can, if I want to focus on that other thing I just remembered, I can click here. And it's almost like each bullet point that I create becomes its own document. Right? And so it's even great for meeting notes. And you're going to see that a little bit later in the hour. I'm going to show you how I sometimes use this um, to write up meeting notes when I'm on a Zoom with a client and I'm taking notes. 
It's a great tool for that purpose, right? But before we dive too deep into this, I want to go through some of the settings and the preferences. You know, the first thing you saw, and I've been, you know, talking about this because I just, I just think it's so cool, is the Christmas mode. And you'll find that here in the theme. I think themes are a pro feature only. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So you don't have a whole lot of choices here. There's the default, which is just plain white, which I'd actually gotten back to for a while this year. I was starting to get really into like dark mode, like all these apps have dark mode. And then I started reading articles that suggested that even though dark mode might on the surface feel like it's easier on your eyes, it actually isn't. You don't realize it, but your eyes are actually straining more than they are when things are nice and bright like this. Um, and here's dark mode, right? CP is kind of cool. That's kind of, it reminds me of when, uh, when Amazon first came out with the Kindle and they had the kind of look and feel that, you know, they were trying to make it emulate like a real piece of paper that you'd see in a book, like that kind of tone to it. Um, there's the sci-fi mode, which is pretty cool for geeks. And then Sakura, which is sort of like sepia with a pink kind of tinge to it. But lately, for obvious reasons, this time of year, I'm kind of stuck on Christmas mode, right? So we have these. We also have some different features, and I believe these are available in the free version. We, have, we can do a narrow document layout, which when I click on that, I don't know if you noticed in the background, it just makes the document a little smaller, just as the settings name would suggest, right? Display images in line we'll come back to because I first have to show you how the image thing works, which is kind of, it's another really cool thing. But you have, with a pro account, you have up to a gig of uh, uploads each month. And so it resets each month. So if you want to upload documents and images, you can do it. And it's actually uh, pretty easy. Kelly says, I don't have pro and have theme options. Okay, so maybe they've made it available in the free. I thought at some point it was only available in pro. Um, so great. Uh, do you have, and then my question is, do you have all of the theme options or maybe just a few of them? I don't, you know, maybe that's the difference. I don't know, but I thought I remembered at one point, at least that themes weren't available in free. Okay. Also notice here in the key map, it shows you a lot of the keyboard shortcuts that definitely come in handy. Tab will indent, shift tab will outdent. These two are the most common that I use these all, all day long when I'm in Dynalist. I'm constantly you know, shifting things in and back out, right? Need to do this on Friday. Now, as soon as I start thinking in terms of a date, again, Dynalist on the surface looks really simple, but under the hood, there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with it. So if I want to actually set this up with a due date, again, you wouldn't know this unless you took the time to do some research and read some help files and learn you know, how this app works. That's one of the keys. I think a lot of us get into any app, even an app as simple as Dynalist, and we think we're just going to understand intuitively exactly how to use it. But you got to take the time to learn how to use these tools. And Dynalist, as far as apps go, is probably the simplest, in my experience, to learn how to use. But there's still going to be some things you're going to need to, you know, take some time to, to learn what it can do. So, for example, as long as I've got a space after the last word and I hit an exclamation mark, that brings up a calendar, right? I only learned about that because I read the help tips and started because I wanted to learn what can this thing do. So let's say I want it to be due next Friday. I can, I can set it for the 20th and I can add a time to that. I can say, let's do this at 4 a.m. Okay. And then I have recurrence. Now recurrence is definitely only available in pro. I actually just read that this morning when I was going through some of the settings and just kind of brushing up on what I wanted to show you all today. So you can say it repeats daily, weekly on Friday. It's assuming Friday because that's the date I've already set for its due date, right? Monthly on the 20th, annually on December 20th or custom, right? So it's got some pretty robust recurrence features that you can use. Okay, now when you initially, when you're in the line sort of editing it, the, uh, the date format takes on a weird format, but notice as soon as I hit enter and go to the next line, it renders it in a normal kind of, you know, legible date format. Let's put it that way. Okay. So there's that. What does it look like when Friday, December 20th rolls around? What, what if you set it for? Let's put it in for today. 8.20 8 a.m. Let's put it in for today. I pr probably could have just gone in and edited that, but anyway. So we'll set it for today at 8 a.m. And so there it shows you 19 minutes ago. I, my my question still is an answer. What, 
does it alert you some other way? No, there's no notification, okay. you know. You know, as with many of these tools, if you're going to use it, you really need to get in the habit of actually using it, which means you have to go into it and check, right? Um, I believe you can do, there's a lot of cool search capabilities in here, so you can probably search for, you know, do today maybe. I don't know, there may be things, again, that's something you'd have to research, right? You know, but it's not going to be sophisticated like ClickUp where you can get a calendar view and get alerts about, you know, and, and like I love ClickUp, how it emails me all the things that are due today. Some people get overwhelmed by that kind of thing coming into their inbox. I don't because, first of all, I've cleared out a lot of my inbox by putting all my clients in Slack. Secondly, those are good, what I call throwaway emails. I like getting them as the reminder, and sometimes I'll leave them unread and kind of check them off that way because those emails come in and I can click over. But that's ClickUp. That's another conversation for another day. So, you know, the idea here is if you're going to use an app like DynaList, it's not going to give you the notifications about when something's due. So if you're going to use this, again, it's simple. You'll have to kind of make yourself uh, get into the habit of going in and checking these things, right? Um, so before I get too deep into this, I do want to talk to you about pricing. So let me go back up to the top here, okay? And I'll kind of use Dynalist as the example of how to organize and outline something as I'm showing you this stuff. So let's say I want to do a presentation on Dynalist and I want to talk to you about pricing. So I start the first bullet point of pricing. I indent, right? And I took the time ahead of time to go ahead and get the URL for Dynalist pricing page. So from my other screen, I'm just going to copy and paste that. So it deals with hyperlinks pretty well, right? And now I can click over and I can show you what the pricing is. First of all, a free account does a lot. Okay, but for $7.99 a month, which is what it costs when you pay for a whole year up front, it, uh, I think it's very reasonable, right? It's going to come out to just under 100 bucks a year. Um, and what I also did, let's go back to Dynalist here, is I prepared a little Google Sheet. Again, it's got good linking capabilities. So anything I want to link to, I just copy and paste the link in here. And now I can click on that and it'll open up Google Sheets and see I prepared ahead of time. It's $7.99 a month for 12 months. If you pay for a whole year up front, $95.88. Like I said, it comes to just under 100 bucks for a year. I think that's very worth it for an app that I think you're going to find you can use a lot all year long. Right? Um, so that's the pricing side. Usually we save pricing for last because we want to dazzle you with all the features. I'm not here trying to sell Dynalist. I mean, other than the fact that I love it, and I think if you're overwhelmed with all these apps and not sure where to start or what to use, this is a great starting point for sure. And like I said before, it might even be something you sort of continue with uh, for a long time to come. Uh, I think it was Kelly who's here with us this morning, who had said uh, on Facebook this morning that she actually uses this with a couple of clients. And I'm going to show you how the sharing works in a few minutes. And, and she said that she uses it to collaborate with other people. And it's pretty good on collaboration, actually. You know, it's very easy to share and enter somebody's email address, and they have full edit rights to, uh, to Dynalist. So. so there's that. Um, as I mentioned, you know, you can see here on the left, uh, if I want to organize something, I have folders and documents, right? And I can do subfolders. So I'm already in my Zoom in with Seth folder here, right? I can right click it and say, let's do another subfolder if I want to. And so again, you have this structure available to you so you can organize things as much as you like, right? I'm going to delete that folder. I would caution you not to get too crazy with, we talked about this yesterday in our 97 and up call. You know, we get into analysis paralysis a lot with these apps, which is why we wind up getting overwhelmed with them in general, is because we get so hung up in trying to be so organized about it that we spend all of our time trying to get organized about it, and none of our time actually getting the work done, right? At a certain point, the tool has to be used as the tool so that you can get the work done, and the tool itself doesn't, you know, shouldn't become the work, right? So we have to be careful about that. I would keep it fairly simple. Um, and that's why I said, you know, consider that you can kind of use one document for a lot of things um, and you should kind of try and figure out where you can lean more in that direction, right? So we can create folders. So let's say I can go, you know, just uh, right up here, actually, if I want to create something at the root level, it says create a new file. But really, that means a new document, a new folder. Uh, OPML is a specific uh, format type that has a lot to do with like database applications in the cloud. So if you're using something else, uh, a lot of times you can export 
that data to what's called an OPML file. And if you've done that, then this is how you would import that into Dynalist. Uh, some of you may be familiar with a product called Workflowy, which is a direct competitor to Dynalist. Same idea. It's like bullet points on steroids. If you wanted to switch from one to the other, this would be the way you can do it, right? So I'll create a, a new you know, document here for, and we'll come back to this, not a new document, sorry, I meant new folder. And we'll call this my clients, right? And we'll come back to that because I'm going to talk about how you can use this uh, a bit for project management. If you're in on my webinar that I did not long ago on how to start or restart your accounting or bookkeeping career, I, I, I showed you some of what I'm also going to show you again here today. Okay, so that's a folder. You've seen a document. A document is just anything like this, and that's kind of your starting point. And then you start creating your bullet points, you know, within that document to start creating your structure. You also have bookmarks. So if you notice all the way on my left, there's this narrow little margin on the left. Right here, I've got the, the document or what they call the file pane, or this actually turns that on and off, you know, the list where it says my files. Over here, I've got bookmarks. Right. And over here, I've got tags. So those are other ways to sort of, you know, if I want to tag the pricing thing here, I can click on the little hamburger menu next to pricing and I can choose add to bookmarks. OK, and then it takes me over to the bookmark so I can name it because I might need a little more context. Right. If or I'll, I'll just call it Dynalist. Pricing. Right. The other thing I can do is I can tag something in here. So maybe I'll tag the uh, Dynalist pricing page here. Um, hashtag pricing. Okay, and so you, if you use a hashtag, it recognizes that as such. And now if I go here to the tag pane, I'll see hashtag pricing. So now anything that I've put that hashtag on in any document, in any folder across my whole Dynalist account, uh, can be sourced now by clicking over into the hashtags and clicking on that. It's just It works just like any other tag in any other application. Yeah. It's a way to cross index something that has a, that has as a, you know, that is sort of a common thread to a lot of different things. You know, that's the best way I can explain sort of how to use that. Okay. So that's, uh, so that's your folders, your documents, your bookmarks, and your tags. It's all stuff that you can use as a way of organizing your data, right? Now let's talk about images. And again, I believe that this is a pro only feature. Okay, but let's say I want to drag an image over to this. I'm going to take uh, from my other screen, I have a Windows Explorer folder open with my images at the ready. I'm going to click and drag over here. Notice what it does. It says, oh, we're going to drop an image, drop it here to upload. And here's what it does. It gives you a URL. So it says, please copy the mark down below with control C. So I'll hit control C on my keyboard, done. And now I can paste that URL anywhere I want. So when I paste that in here, it puts in its own little short code because it recognizes that it's an image that we're putting in. And by default, it just renders that little image icon. If I hover my mouse over it, I can see the actual image, right? But now if we go back to our settings, and I told you I was going to come back to this. If I choose this option that says display images in line, now it does just that. Now, the reason I don't normally like this is because, as you can see, it takes up a lot of the screen now, right? And so that kind of gets in my way. But if you were using Dynalist, as I did when I did that recent webinar on starting or restarting your accounting career, I, uh, for those of you who watched it, uh, might remember that I used Dynalist instead of PowerPoint as an example, and I just stepped in at each level. And so in a, in a context like that, I might want to turn this setting on so that as I step into that level, you know, the image just appears, the image appears, I can zip it up, as you can see, you know, to hide it. And so it's a good way if you're using Dynalist to give a presentation, you can sort of prepare and plan that way, have that setting turned on, put the image in. And then when you get to this point in the presentation, you just click to expand it and there's your image and now you can talk about whatever it is for a few minutes, right? Um, and I'm gonna go back and turn that setting back off. Okay, so that's your images option, okay? And now let's talk about that. Let's talk about making a presentation. So if I want to, I can go back to the top here and I'm gonna click the hamburger menu and choose collapse all. Right, that kind of, it shrinks up everything, including everything at every level in between. So it's a good way to kind of reset and start from the beginning and make sure we're kind of taking it from the top here. If 
by the way, if we want more room, I can collapse this. We saw that before by clicking over here. There's also this arrow here that collapses the file pane. So when I'm ready to get focused and I don't necessarily need access to the whole structure, you know, this is definitely handy. So if I'm doing an outline, a presentation that I want to plan in here, we'll start there. Um, we'll call it intro to QuickBooks Online, right? Okay, and like I showed you earlier, I'm going to click on the bullet point so I can focus just on that. And notice I have my sort of breadcrumb trail up here, so it's easy to navigate back up a level when I need to. Okay, so the first thing, what's the first thing I want to do when I'm introducing somebody to QuickBooks Online? Let's just do an overview of the navigation, right? Oops. But oops, you know what, before that, I might want to do setup. See how easy that was? What I did there was, so I start here and I put this in and then and then in my brain I said, wait a minute, you know, before I go to the next line, I really want to add a setup, you know, segment before I do the overview because that might be the first thing somebody really needs to know when they're starting with QuickBooks Online is how to set it up. So using my arrow keys, notice my cursor is flashing on the next line. With the up arrow, I go there. With the enter key, it advances a line and gives me a bullet point above so I can go back in and do setup, right? And the other way I could do that, by the way, is if I, I could just put setup here and then I can click and drag the bullet point. That's how easy it is to reorder something. Okay, um, and then, so overview of the navigation, what would we wanna show them? You know, the new, uh, the new left hand margin Uh, quick add is now over there, right? And then I might want to show them expenses, sales, which I think they changed that. It's no longer called sales, but whatever's got customers and invoices and all that in it. And then I might want to show them the uh, accounts. What do they call it now where you find the chart of accounts? I think that's in accounting. Accounting. Because then there's accountant, which is the accountant stuff. That's where I always get tripped up. Anyway, but notice what I did here. You know, this really all comes under the having, heading of overview, but I didn't indent them, right? So easily fixed. I'll grab my mouse. I'll, select, I'll click and drag and select and hit the tab key. And boom. Now I've got the whole lot of them instantly indented exactly where I want them, right? So that's one of the reasons I love using Dynalist now to prepare for any kind of presentation because what you're starting to see now is how easy it is to, to create, to start creating an outline and then just reorganizing things, right? Um, maybe uh, after overview, I want to do entering transactions. And once I've got that there, I realize, you know, maybe I should do the quick add as part of entering transactions. So let me click and drag that. And you'll notice the little line that appears, right? So I can just drag it somewhere out of the hierarchy there and below and then hit the tab key and boom, now it's under entering transactions, right? So really easy to create that hierarchy. And then, like I said, now I can... Uh, drill into the left margin quick ad now and talk about all the different types of transactions I can create from that quick ad, right? So I can, again, I can go as many levels deep as I need or want to, you know, to get in and focus. And again, the breadcrumbs are across the top. So if I need to go back up a level, here it is. Uh, what it will do when I have a lot of levels is it will give me this ellipsis, which I can click on and what it'll do, because sometimes what it'll do is it'll skip a few levels and show me the most sort of uh, the lowest levels near where I am. And you can click to get, uh, you know, more of a, like a drop down. In this case, it's not, I haven't gone that deep, but it will do that at a certain point where if you click the ellipsis, it will show you what's sort of missing in between, right? So they just, they try to make it easy for you to get back up to whatever level you need to. Okay, then we have formatting. So like when I was doing the start or restart your accounting or bookkeeping career webinar, let's collapse all here. You can do that obviously at any given level. What I said was at, the, at level two of the outline, I wanna color code these things because I wanna be able to see clearly what's at what level. Now, you know, Dynalist is pretty good about that. If I choose uh, expand all on this, it gives you these lines that really does visually help you see what's at what level, what kind of lines up but I find that it's also useful so that at level two, I can say, you know what? Let's make those all blue. 
So I'm clicking the hamburger menu and down at the bottom of the menu that appears, I have not a whole lot of choices, but some choices as to color that I can choose. So this just gives me an added visual so I can see what's at what level, right? And then for level three, I might wanna choose a different color. And of course you can, uh, let me back up. Of course I can highlight all of them and then what I do to one, I do to them all. So in one click, I can establish the color when they're all adjacent like that. That's very easy to do. And then I can do this one. Okay, and there's more formatting I can do. So if I go into expenses and I wanna start writing up what we're gonna do with expenses, we have uh, checks, right? Credit cards, debit card. And I can go in here and I can say, well, let's bold this, control B. And when I hit control B, it uses that, there's this other kind of markup that you see in a lot of apps on text. It just puts the double stars around it. That's the markup that it uses. But notice if I click away, now checks is bolded, right? I can also do italics with control I, okay? And control U will get me, oh, does it not do control U? I could have sworn control U would give me an underline. I guess it doesn't do underlines. Okay, so we've got bold and italics. And if you wanna learn how to do all that stuff, again, it's gonna be in the help files. Right, so you can do a search and you can go into the key map here and you'll probably find a lot of that in here. It's nicely organized, working with lists, navigating and moving, search, and here's formatting, right? So under formatting, you'll see control B is bold, control I is italics. You can format something as code with control and whatever that little symbol is called, I forget. Control K will let you add a hyperlink sort of manually instead of copying and pasting. Um, strike through doesn't have a code, but I can assign one by hitting this plus sign. So you can also customize what keyboard shortcut does what. And it, that will give you access to something that you don't initially have access to by default. Right, Shannon so is mentioning that that is only available in the pro. Yeah, a lot of this is. And that's why I wanted to stress the pricing up front and point out how, in my opinion, how ridiculously inexpensive it is. It's worth paying for the pro for this, especially if this is the only app you're going to use. Because like I said at the beginning, the whole reason you're using this is you're so overwhelmed with all these apps and you just want something simple. And boom, here it is, right? Uh, I don't know what format as latex means. It gives me some inappropriate images, <laughs> but anyway, I guess that's a thing. Uh, we can insert by holding down control and shift and then hitting enter. Uh, we can toggle heading because there's heading formats, right? So instead of bolder italics, I can set this with at the very bottom here under the colors is heading one, two, and three. So I can, I can make this heading one. That's going to make it nice and big and bold to stand out. So again, under your gear icon, under settings and key map, you know, that's where you're going to find all your formatting options. And you can create keyboard shortcuts to apply color labels quickly if that's something you know you're going to want to do a lot of, right? So that's your formatting. Uh, the other thing which is going to come up, um, I just noticed the chat kind of popping up here. Um, Katrina says, lots of color happening. I'm creating a work of art. Um, yes, it's Beautiful. So, um, check boxes. Uh, to demonstrate the check boxes, let's go back to the top and let's look at the use case of practice management. So, what I might do is I might have a document here, and I, st I created it before called My Clients, right? So, let's create a new document in there. I just right click that. And I'll call this, so under the folder, my clients, I'll just have a document for each client, right? Client X. Okay, now right at the top, I might wanna start organizing this the way I do in all of my project management apps. Um, you know, by starting off with, I'll create what I'll call a client template, right? So let, actually let's make that this level, client template. Okay, and this way, whenever I get a new client, I want to set them up, I can pretty much copy and paste this into that client's document. Uh, and so it's, it's my way of creating a template. It's, you know, it's not a true template. It's just my workaround for creating a template, right? So what do I want to have on each client? I want to have general 
slash inbox. That's so if I'm just moving quickly and on the fly, I want to get something stuck in there that I can organize later. That's what I use my general inbox for. Then we have accounting. Then we have reference info. Okay, this is kind of those of you who've seen me do ClickUp and before that Active Collab and other project management apps for an accounting or bookkeeping client. You know, this is kind of my standard, right? But now what I want to do is I want to get into the accounting part. And as you know, for this part, I like to format things sort of based on the balance sheet. So we have a banking section. We have accounts receivable. I have accounts payable. I have payroll, sales tax. These are derived from the liability section of the balance sheet in case you're wondering, because obviously they're also expenses where the payroll is also an expense anyway. Um, equity and then taxes for non-sales tax, like income tax or property tax or whatever, right? Or I can just have a general category called taxes, right? And then I can go, let's put that there and indent it and put sales tax there and indent it. Again, if you can conceive it, you can create it. That's the beauty of this. I can format it in any way that works for me, okay? Um, boo, 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 boo. So now let's get into tasks. Let's go into banking and let's say I have update bank feeds, right? Now this is, I don't know, in my case, this is usually going to be a weekly task. So let's, let's focus on banking. I'm going to click right in there, right? But what I may want to do is in here, I'll have the different bank accounts. So I'll have Wells Fargo, B of A, Chase, and so on, right? All the clients' different accounts that need to get updated. And now what I want to be able to do is check these off every week when they're done. And I want to make them into recurring tasks. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is at the top of this document, I'm going to choose this option. I click the hamburger menu, and I'm going to choose this option that says add checkboxes to children. It adds a checkbox to the top level as well, right? And then over here, what I want to do is I'll say this is due today. I'm going to maybe do this client's bank feeds every Friday. And it's going to repeat weekly on Friday, right, at 9 a.m. I probably wouldn't actually care about the time. And then over here, you decide if it's from completion when it's going to create the next one. If you leave this unchecked, it's just going to keep creating them every week. So that's strictly a personal preference. My thing is I like to use this option because otherwise, if I don't take the time to check things off, it starts getting cluttered up with every iteration. And that just gets annoying to me. But some of you might like that because you might still leave the question, did I do it last week or not? Not that it really matters. If I didn't do it last week, I'm just going to do it this week for both weeks, right? So, again, for me, it doesn't much matter. Um, also, that, once – yeah? Um, <clears throat> on the uh, recurrence, would it make more sense to do it at the higher level and then you don't have to do one for Wells, one for B of A, one for Chase? Strictly personal preference. It's, it definitely would make sense to do that, but maybe somebody has their – calendar structure set up such that, you know, they're not going to do all the accounts in one sitting. You know, so it's, again, it's strictly a matter of how you want to structure your, you know, you know, your time on this, but absolutely. Um, and what I also wanted to show you was when I, once you click in here and it takes on that kind of generic format, I can copy and paste this down. Make sure you put a space after and then paste it in. Boom. Or as Greg points out, I can just paste it up here and say, let's scrap these, right? No need to do extra work. If I don't need to, I can just set the whole banking thing as a recurring. Okay, so that gives you an idea. Now, accounts receivable, what would you do? Maybe you would put in here to do a review of the aging, you know, once a week, right? And so I, I, I think I've shown you enough for you to get the idea of, you know, kind of how you can structure this. Really, what I, I don't expect you to necessarily do it the way I do it. You know, like Greg just sort of underscored, there's, um, there's different ways to approach this. You know, Greg's idea was very sound. Just do it at the parent level. And then the theory is everything inside of that is what you're going to do every single week. Makes total sense. Um, and you could also, because maybe there are some tasks that are going to be monthly. That's where you might use hashtags. Create a hashtag called monthly. 
right? And that way you can quickly kind of filter the list. Maybe we're only going to do the AR monthly, right? So we'll create that tag and same with AP. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, and so now I can click on one of these tags and it basically does a quick search and filters everything down to just what I've tagged monthly, right? But notice what happens here on the right. It shows me that it's basically done, the, it's, first of all, it shows you how you can just manually do the search instead of clicking on one. You can just type in to the search, hashtag monthly. But notice here, the default is what it did, which is a flat search, meaning it's gonna look just in the current document. But then here I have this option that says search in all documents. So what that might do is it might give me uh, a complete look at all the monthly tasks that I need to do for every client I have. Right, and then notice here it says refine your search with operators like is completed and edited. And then it gives you this uh, hyperlink for learn more. So I'm gonna click on that because now I know that takes me to the help file that teaches me how to do different search operators and that is definitely going to come in handy, especially if I'm gonna get into this and start using it a lot. So I'm gonna take that whole hyperlink and press Control C, and I'm gonna go back into DynaList, and what I'll do is let's go back up to here, and maybe what I'll do is in my, you know, somewhere else, I'll, I'll just use, you know, the, the outline that we've been building apart from the My Clients thing, um, and I'll create something right at the top here that says Learn DynaList, Right, and I'll call it search uh, operators. Okay, and I'll paste the link in there. So this way I don't have to, you know, remember how I got back to that search link, right? I just now have it here. Like this is, and I'll, I'll kind of bookmark it, maybe even set a due date that I want to research and review this, you know, later today or over the weekend so I can really brush up and get really skilled at how to use the search because if I'm going to use this app, you know, pretty regularly or pretty deeply, then I definitely want to learn how to use that because you can already see how powerful and helpful that's going to be. All right, so now this is this would be my accounting template, right? And maybe I wouldn't want that in there, but I wanted to show you, you know, the, um, the recurrence in there, <coughs> but I wanted to show you how it works. But now that I've got the client template, Let's go back into my clients and let's create a new document and I'll call this client X and pretty much, and I'll, I'll reorder the client template. Notice I can do that easily with a click and drag because I probably always want that on top. And now what I can do is, I'm not sure if it'll take everything if I do it collapse, but I think it will. So I collapse everything, highlight the three general items here, press control C, go into client X, Make sure I'm in one level, control V like Victor, and boom, it's all there. So it's basically two seconds to take my template that I've created and set up a new client. I checked Dynalist is not in Zapier, which surprised me actually. I sort of thought it would, although I was kind of thinking, I guess it's so simple. It's maybe they just, you know, what would you do? Um, and maybe it's too sort of flexible in a sense to be able to have Zapier, you know, grab something and then tell Dynalist where to put it. So, you know, because you could be constantly creating and evolving things in here. So maybe there's a logic to why something like this wouldn't be available in Zapier. Um, anyway, and then reference info is, you know, again, those of you who are kind of familiar with my process already, uh, reference info is where I might put links to, uh, you know, sort of important things. So let's say uh, this client that I'm setting this up for was my good friend, John Ferrara right? One thing I might do is take the URL to his contact information in Nimble. And just paste that URL in. So because I like to do that when I'm working on a client, I like to have their, uh, their profile open in Nimble. Because a lot of times I have in Nimble, those of you who've seen our demonstrations of Nimble, they've been many, you know, I have all of my recent correspondence with that client right there at my fingertips in his Nimble profile and a lot of other things. Um, Katrina's asking, if, have I looked at Evernote Business as an alternative to Dynos? Not as an alternative. I've looked at it, I've played with it, I've had it, and I've used it. But I don't know that I would really compare that to this. First of all, well, I don't know if it costs more. Pro cost is probably around the same. I think it's like 10 bucks a month or Evernote business. Um, but that's really a different app, 
you know, and I don't think it's nearly as easy to learn how to use as Dynalist is. That's just my opinion. Um, and one of the things I found with Evernote, which is why I was excited in the last couple of years to go back to OneNote, is that I always found Evernote a bit clunky, especially as you start adding a lot of information in there. I always preferred the organization that OneNote offered, you know, very much over, over what Evernote offers. And, and again, there's a lot of ways you could probably do the same kind of stuff that I'm showing you here with Dynalist, right? You could do it in a Google document. Google documents will let you do bullet points, but I think this makes it a lot easier to move those bullet points around and reorganize things, right? So again, to each his own, it's, you know, it's always, this is, there's no, I'm not telling you this is what you have to do. You know, I'm just showing you an option that I think uh, is extremely viable, especially if you're somebody who's kind of in that position where you're struggling because of all these different apps that there are to use and you don't even know where to start or which one to use. So then start here. That's my suggestion. Alexa says you can color code each client a different color. So when you use tags, you would know which client. That's brilliant, right? Right there. Um, so I'd always have the reference info. I might bold that one, right? I might bold all these top level ones or I might color code them. You know, again, this is all strictly personal preference. Um, so that is... The reference info section. The other thing I talked about that we might want to do here is, you know, with this client, I might want to do meetings. And here's how I love to handle meetings in Dynalist with clients. So I have a major category called meetings. And then over here on the first row, I might have, I'll just put the date. So if we have the meeting today, done. And then what I can do is I can click in here and focus on that. And then all the things we talked about, you know, need reports, to, you know, dot, 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 whatever they need reports for, right? Uh, new hires, employee one, employee two, right? And then if they're like, I just had a call like this with somebody yesterday where he said, I hired a new employee and here was their salary. Uh, they're getting uh, health insurance, right? Uh, it's going to be 1500 a month for their health insurance. You know, whatever it is, I love the idea of using you know, Dynalist to keep track of the meeting notes because, again, I could just really structure and organize this stuff. And by the way, if you ever wanted to, this stuff all copies and pastes very nicely, for example, into a Google Doc. Now somebody's asking, how did you get a Google document up so quickly? Um, if you open up a new tab in Chrome and type docs.new, it will open up a new blank Google document. It puts it in your My Drive folder, and then, of course, you can rearrange it from there. But you see how nicely this copies in? So that's how I, that's how I like to handle meeting notes with clients in Dynalist. Um, let's see. What else did I want to talk to you about today? That may actually cover it. I mean, that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you. Again, there's, you know, there's, there's even more under the hood. Um, I showed you the images. Uh, you can also do files, by the way. So it doesn't have to be uh, that kind of image. Let me see if I can grab a quick example of like a PDF. Here it is. So let's go back. <coughs> um, and let's say you wanted documents. Okay. So I'm going to, Drag this uh, PDF over here. It says processing, file uploaded, control C again, right? This happens to be a document from one of my recent Excel classes at Santa Monica. Boom, and notice it shows that it's a PDF. It doesn't give me a pop-up because it's not an image, but if I click on it, it opens the PDF right up in Dynalist. This was the sign-in sheet for my class. So again, it's not a bad place to store documents. You don't, you have, a, you know, again, the limit on monthly storage or that's not monthly storage. You have unlimited total storage, but each month you can upload up to one gigabyte of documents. And if you're mostly just, you know, putting PDFs in there, then those don't take up any space. They're very small files, right? So, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I think that you could probably get away with using this, you know, for, for storing a lot of documents. Of course, in reality, you know, in my case, I would probably want to recommend, you know, actually using Google Drive for document storage. But again, if you're keeping track of notes and things and follow-ups in Dynalist, it would certainly, I could see where it would be handy 
to store the actual document right there in DynaList. Of course, the other thing you can do if you're using Drive File Stream like I do, instead of storing the document in DynaList, is you can just link directly to the document, right? That's one of the things I love about uh, G Suite and Drive File Stream is how easy it makes it to link to things and share them, you know, in terms of different documents. So, hey Seth, yep, I have a question. I see on the Pro it has a Google Calendar integration. Yeah, can you show how that works? So if you, I don't have it turned on because we were talking about this in 97 and up this week. I tend not to use those kinds of integrations because it clutters up my calendar and makes it very difficult for me to read. But you saw how I assign due dates by using the exclamation mark. If I integrate with Google Calendar, as soon as I assign a due date, it will sync that over to my Google Calendar and it will show up as an appointment on the calendar. What I was wondering is if I could have like a detailed to-do list for the day and then sync it to Google Calendar. So if I want to see the details of what I was going to do, I could just click on a link. Yeah. See, again, that's just you can do it. You can set that integration up. I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. That would mm -hmm. drive me crazy. But I forgot to show you one critical thing. Speaking of to-do lists, that uh, when I was in the accounting, I meant to show you. Oh, I did show you. I, th I, th I thought I did. You know, you turn the check boxes on, right? So this is where I would track the detailed to-do items in DynaList is using the check boxes. And as we were talking about this week in 97 and up, because we've been doing a whole, you know, planning 2020 sort of theme on that, is on my Google Calendar, I keep it pretty high level. So I might have an appointment on my calendar that says work on client X today, but the details are going to be in Dynalist, or in my case, you know, ClickUp is where mm -hmm. I actually do track that kind of stuff, right? So to me, I just, I, I put things sort of in the box that I feel makes sense to put them in. But somebody else suggested that you can create a separate Google calendar just for those kinds of things so mm -hmm. that your main calendar isn't cluttered up with it. So you can have a calendar call and call that calendar your to-do list mm -hmm. and put it in there. And then Dennis, that might work perfectly doing it that mm -hmm. way. Well, I just got an email from Zap. You're saying that as of May 20, 2020, uh, Wonderlist, the support's going away from that. Well, because that got taken over by Microsoft To Do. Yeah, Microsoft rolled out Microsoft To Do. It's basically, it is Wonderlist. It's the same thing. So everybody's mm -hmm. deprecating Wonderlist. And so that's all that means. I'm sure they're going to have Microsoft To Do in there in place of Wonderlist. Yeah, yeah. That's what's trying to get people to migrate to. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, and it's an easy migration for those of you who were using Wonderlist because, again, it's Microsoft bought Wonderlist like three or four years ago, I want to say. And, in 2015. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, so that was four years ago. So now they're just, and that's, it was obvious that was the plan. And, and they had had articles to that effect when they made the acquisition that they were going to be taking what's in Wonderlist and rolling it into one of their products. And now this is it. They're rolling it out. And if you saw my, um, my, I did recently uh, on my notes from Nerds Desktop series, I did look at OneNote 2016, but at the beginning of it, because that morning was when I got the announcement about you know, Wonderlist being sort of rolled into to do. Um, I showed you a quick blurb on Microsoft to do and what it looks like, and you'll see it's it's. I hardly can tell the difference between mm -hmm. Microsoft to do and Wonderlist. It, there's a few little things I could see on the surface, and probably in the next week or two, I'll dig in a little deeper to mm -hmm. see what I can find that makes it really any different from Wonderlist. Although my expectation is that now that they are rolling it up, because when they made the acquisition, they promised they wouldn't touch it too much. And they kept that promise, but now that it's rolling into Microsoft To Do, my guess is they will start making changes to it and rolling out updates to it and so on. You know, because now they're not breaking their promise. It's <laughs> product, all right? Um, but who knows? Maybe, you know, maybe it'll be good. That video I did that I mentioned where I did talk about that for a minute um, was based on the fact that uh, Microsoft had the Windows 10 app for Microsoft OneNote, which for a while, a year or two ago, they were saying the Microsoft OneNote 2016 app was going away. Um, but little by little, I started hearing sort of rumors that they were actually starting once again to develop and add features to the 2016 app. And then uh, they just recently announced that they are in fact going to go back to the 2016 app and continue to push updates for it. And so that whole video that I did was on how I'm going back to OneNote 2016 because I like it better than the Windows 10 app for, and I show you a few specific reasons, you know, why I actually like it so much better. And so I'm really glad that they're doing that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so you can do the Google Calendar integration uh, in DynaList, but for the reasons I mentioned, I don't, I wouldn't do that. But like I said, if you create a separate calendar just for that, when you 
when you link it up, you'll, it'll tap into your Google account and then you'll tell it which of your calendars, if there's more than one, that you want it to use to integrate. So yeah, it could be a great way to do it. I just, like I said, in my own use case, I prefer to have my detailed to-do lists in more of a list kind of format, which Dynalist is perfect for, especially when you have the check boxes. Anybody else, any questions, comments, thoughts? Okay, next week we're gonna look at something I've been playing with in Airtable um, by way of uh, accounting for startups. It's a way of bootstrapping your accounting using Airtable instead of any actual accounting product. But I think you're gonna find there's some pretty interesting things about it that you can do because it's Airtable, it's very customizable. And you can do things that I wish any of the accounting apps out there would do that haven't done it, um, such as creating tags, right? So imagine if I could go into any transaction and tag it with all the tags I want so that I can go back and run reports based on those tags. Seems like it should be an easy thing to do. Definitely easy to do with Airtable. And that's one of the things I'm looking forward to showing you next week. I'm in the process of filling a register that I've set up in Airtable with transaction data so that we can use it to demonstrate what this might look like and how this might work. So for example, if you're worried about uh, Intuit's $50 setup program under QuickBooks Live, you can do your version of that and say, hey, you don't even need a QuickBooks Online subscription. I can show you how you can keep track of your transactions. If you're that small of a startup just getting started, how you can keep your transactions in Airtable, which will only cost you 20 bucks a month. And in fact, it's got a pretty powerful reporting module that you can sort of build around it. Um, so we'll take a look at that next week. I hope to see you there. Bye, y'all.